Hello there, welcome to the Washington Council for High School College Relations Virtual College Planning Day. Thank you for joining us today. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your cameras and microphones are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of many different sessions happening today. Be sure to sign up for more in the next couple hours if you haven't done so already. This presentation is being recorded. It'll be available within about a week at strivescan.com slash wash council. Now that I've gotten the housekeeping stuff out of the way, I'm gonna get out of the way now and turn it over to our presenters. First up, Community Colleges of Spokane. Good morning, thanks for joining us. My name is Leslie Dawson and I am with Spokane Falls Community College. I'm going to let Shelby introduce herself real quick and we'll get started. Hi everyone, my name is Shelby Dickinson. I'm the student recruitment manager specifically at Spokane Community College. So we have the two colleges represented today for you. And then also we have Nikki Nays who uh, works uh, in the outreach office at Spokane Falls Community College. She's going to be monitoring that chat box. So if you have any questions, feel free to throw them in there and we can get them answered as we're presenting. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get us started here with our presentation and our first slide. We're going to talk briefly, um, like I mentioned, about our two campuses um, and define a little bit of what's different between the two of us throughout this presentation because we are not exactly the same uh, by any means, but we do have a lot of things that we align on. Um, so let's go ahead and progress to the next slide, Leslie. We threw up here a couple of traits and qualities that are going to make a, a great CCS student in, in our minds. Definitely don't have to have all of these. I get overwhelmed by just looking at it. Um, but if you can focus in on a few of these things, or you know there's issues um, or struggles that you have in high school, particularly right now with some of these items, it might be a good time to really focus on you know, being more organized, having better time management. I know I'm a procrastinator. That did not help me at all in college. So keep that in mind that if you're able to do a few of these things and do them really well, particularly be a good communicator with your instructors throughout your classes, uh, you'll find a better experience educationally at CCS. Okay, we're gonna dive into a little bit of our services on campus for our students. We're a community college, so we're really community focused um, and we really wanna make sure the whole student is supported, not just your educational journey, but all of your basic needs and everything else that goes along with that. Um, because we know it's really hard to do well in school if some of your other needs aren't being met. So we have a lot of great things going for you. Um, our libraries are awesome, obviously. You have spaces you can rent out. We have a library of things where you can rent everything from a vacuum to a blender, um, things that college students typically don't just have laying around. Um, our librarians are wonderful and want to help you through your research projects, whatever it may be. Um, we have tutoring centers. Tutoring is free to students on campus. We want to help you get through those classes that are a struggle, the math, the English, whatever it may be. Please utilize these services. And right now, of course, we're doing a lot of virtual tutoring if that's something that works for you. Disability support services, we always like to mention this. If you're a student who has an IEP or a 504 plan uh, currently at your high school, we'd love to chat with you more about how we can accommodate um, some of the things that you might need to be successful as a college student. So those that staff would love to meet with you to talk further about that. Maybe it's an ergonomic chair or more test time, um, whatever it may be, um, they can help work through it with you. Student employment, if you're someone who wants to work on campus, there's a lot of great opportunities to do that. We have work studies in our office who give campus tours every day. If you're an outgoing person, you can answer phones, um, help with printing, work in the library, uh, food service, all kinds of stuff there. Counseling services, they're there to help you through your classes. Make sure you're on track with your schedule each quarter. We also have um, free mental health counseling on both of our campuses that you can utilize each and every quarter if you need that. Veterans Center, we're serving all of our veterans here. We have a center on both campuses to help you out. Make sure you can utilize all of your benefits. We do have on-site childcare. Um, our average student is a little bit older, especially at SCC. So this is an important one. If folks have families, um, kiddos, they can drop them off at daycare while they go to class, not to worry. 
And then Student Health Center, this is one unique to SEC. If you're not feeling well, you can go over there and, and get checked out, get your flu shot, whatever it may be. We actually have a vaccination site right now at SEC for our COVID vaccines. Um, food pantries, we have food pantries on both campuses. You can visit three times a quarter and even get a hygiene kit if you need shampoo, deodorant, whatever it may be. We do not want our students to have to worry about food insecurity. So this is a really great one to take advantage of and even staff members can use it. So it's not something you should shy away from if it would help you in your experience. Student clubs and orgs, we have 40 plus options at both campuses. So this is a great way to get involved. Uh, even if it has nothing to do with your intended major, it's a fun way to just meet other students on campus. Everything from ghost adventures to the sign language club at SFCC. So it's a fun way to, to dive in and get to have some fun experiences, maybe even travel a little bit um, while you're going to school. And then um, let's see, multicultural center, we have centers on both campuses that are open to all students to come in. This is where a lot of our affinity group clubs meet um, each and every month, but great spaces on campus that can be as quiet or as rowdy uh, as they want them to be. Uh, just a good spot for students to get involved. They're planning different speaker series um, on diversity and different things each and every quarter. Workforce development, this is a great office for students um, who are, tend to be a little bit older, so we won't touch on that too much today. And then career and transfer centers, those are the spots where students, if you're graduating with us after two years and going on to a, a different college, we want you to be able to have some, some really good support in that transition and that next step, or finding a job after you graduate if that's your path. I'll head back to you, Leslie. Keep in mind, we do have a swimming pool and a rock climbing wall at SFCC. All right, perfect. So I'm going to touch on a little bit about our academic offerings. Um, between our two courses, we have over 155 different programs of study. So you have lots of options as to what you might want to uh, pursue after high school. We do offer online, on ground, and hybrid. Our hybrid courses are very much probably like what you're doing now, meaning that you would take some of your coursework, especially those hands-on courses on campus, and then have the opportunity to work online um, for some of those other programs, meaning you really can design what will work best for you in your programs of study. We do run on 12-week quarter systems, and most of our students, they prefer to go to the fall, winter, and spring session. Our summer sessions are condensed, and usually are to help pick up those courses that maybe you weren't able to fit into your schedule or you need as a, a prerequisite. So definitely something um, to look into as you continue on your educational path. Uh, one of the cool things about our community colleges is that we have a ton of educational options. So everything from career and technical certificates, some of which you can get done in as little as a year, all the way up to a bachelor's of arts program, meaning that you can do all four years on ground. I'll talk a little bit more about that here in a moment. And then one of the other things that we do offer is credit for prior learning. So if you have been taking some coursework while you're in high school, we would certainly look at that to make sure that uh, those credits apply. So I'm gonna start with our certificates and then our two-year associate degrees. Like I said, these really are intended to get you through course, your courses and out into the workforce quickly. Um, these are very specific. And like I said, you can get those done in as little as a year. And then our associate degrees, those are generally six to seven quarters or two years. And like I said, these are very focused on those high demand fields that we currently have in the Spokane area. I'm going to go ahead and defer to Shelby to talk a little bit more about the trades and apprenticeship programs. Yeah, so we have some great apprenticeship options specifically through Spokane Community College. Apprenticeship is essentially learning on the job. Um, so apprenticeships are going to be anywhere from two to five years and students, since they're learning on the job, get paid. <laughs> they're working. Um, so 20 bucks an hour is the average of what a starting student as an 18 year old would make um, coming directly into that apprenticeship. And these are really high demand construction fields, things like roofing, um, painting, um, heat and frost insulator, uh, electrician, plumbing, different things like that. So keep that in mind. Um, this is a great option for students who are great at working with their hands. Um, physical labor is not an issue. Um, and just really want to get out there and start making money right away. 
keep that in mind. We also have a great class called Skilled Trades Prep. You'll see that last line at the bottom, $25 for 12 weeks. This introduces you to all of those trade options um, to see what you might like to do and then helps you get started in an apprenticeship because it can be competitive. Thanks, Leslie. Absolutely. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about direct transfer degrees. This is a great opportunity for you to get your first two years, so those 90 credits, out of the way at the community colleges, and then step into a four-year program at any of the state universities. Uh, one of the great things is we have agreements with those universities, meaning that all of your credits that you have taken with our community colleges are going to apply to that degree. And we work with you every step of the way. So we have those degree plan maps that ensure that you're gonna be on path and ready to transfer over to that four-year education plan. And then lastly, like I uh, mentioned, we do have several Bachelor of Applied Science degrees. These are gonna be four years on one of our campuses. They're pretty specific to our IT um, programs, as well as business uh, and healthcare. So just something to think about. That means that you're going to take that two-year associate's degree and then transfer to your upper division coursework right on campus. So definitely diverse options as far as what you can study at the community colleges. Just want to touch on a little bit about paying for colleges. You'll hear so this problem. Sorry, Leslie, we're about 45 seconds over time. Here. Oh, we are? Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, let me just jump over then to um, our contact information, and then we can certainly work with you and um, go ahead and take a screenshot, and we can answer any other questions uh, moving forward. Fantastic. Thank you very much. If you have questions for any of our reps, use the Q&A button. You can do that at any time. Also, uh, the reps might be sending you information in the chat, so look for that as well. Up next, we will hear from Washington State University, Vancouver. Okay, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Kim Hyatt. I'm with the admissions office at Washington State University, Vancouver. And I have two colleagues with me today who will be answering questions through the Q&A and I'll turn it over to them to introduce themselves. Hey everybody, good morning. My name is Camila Yushi, her pronouns. I'm an admissions counselor at WSU Vancouver. I work primarily with freshman students. So if you have any questions, please let us know and we'd be happy to answer. Hi everyone, my name is Erin Jensen, I use she, her pronouns, and I also work in admissions at Washington State University, Vancouver. I work primarily with freshmen and I'd be happy to answer any questions. So we're glad you're here, thank you. All right, so we'll go ahead and get started. Um, so welcome again. Uh, WSU Vancouver is in the homeland of the Chinookan and Tidenapalm peoples and the Cowlitz Indian tribe. We invite you to send us your questions throughout the program and we'll do our best to answer them live here, to, well, here today through the Q&A, or if we don't get a chance, we'll definitely follow up with you after today's program. WSU Vancouver is part of a multi-campus system, which includes five physical campuses throughout the state of Washington and one online campus. Our campus enrollment is more than 3,500 students, and we offer a small school feel with the resources of the large Washington State University system. Your degree, regardless of which campus you attend, will be from Washington State University. We also offer a wide variety of degrees. Whether you want to become an accountant, a teacher, an engineer, nurse, writer, doctor, lawyer, digital content specialist, there's something for everyone. And if you don't see the major that you're looking for, ask. Names of degrees can vary across universities and there's often more than one degree option for many careers. If you're undecided about your major, that's okay. We have academic advisors who specialize in working with students who are still deciding on a major. WSU Vancouver is truly a student-centered campus, and we offer many free resources to support you in your academics and learning, as well as your well-being and your preparation for graduate school and employment. 
You can see many of them listed here. The key, of course, is taking advantage of the resources. One of my favorite resources is Career Services. They offer free job and internship fairs for students, as well as workshops to help you write your resume, prepare for a job interview, and learn about careers and majors. Having a well-rounded college experience means also getting involved. And leadership, recreation, and student organizations are the three pillars of student involvement on the WSU Vancouver campus. You can see many of the opportunities in each of these areas. And the great thing about all of these areas is that they have paid positions that you can apply for. So you can do something you love and get paid for it at the same time. How do you apply as a freshman or running start student? The process is really straightforward. Complete the online application. There's no essay required and pay the application fee. We also have application fee waivers to students who are receiving free or reduced lunch and for those who qualify for the college bound scholarship. You'll submit a copy of your high school transcript within the application or you can send it to us later through the admissionsdocs.wsu.edu website. We'll need your final high school transcript after admission. If you're a Running Start student, we encourage you to submit your official community college transcript early so that you can receive an official transfer credit evaluation. Admission for freshman and Running Start students is based on meeting the core academic requirements, the strength of your coursework, and your grade trends. Something new with the 2022 admission cycle is that WSU does not require or use the SAT and ACT in the admissions process. The college academic distribution requirements that I mentioned earlier are listed on this screen. These are the core academic subjects that you need to have completed by the time you finish high school or running start. But note that universities are able to still consider your application for admission if you have up to three core academic deficiencies. So we encourage you to apply no matter where you're at at your education and we'll work with you on a path moving forward. We also want to point out that Washington State University awards academic college credit for advanced placement, IB and running start work. You can see the scores that are required listed here on the screen. And we also want to point out that we welcome applications from homeschool students. Homeschool students follow the same admission process as freshmen and running start and provide copies of their high school transcripts and official college transcripts, as well as an academic resume of their homeschool work. Paying for college is one of the big important things to think about when you're looking at where to go, what to study, and you know, pursuing your college education. So we offer a free workshop called the A to Z of Paying for College, which is offered two times per month. We encourage you and your families to attend. We'll cover the different ways for college, different ways to pay for college that you see listed here on the screen. If you're a college-bound scholarship recipient, know that this scholarship covers your full tuition at WSU and the tuition for Washington residents is listed here on the slide. The books that you see is a cost that is probably on the higher end. WSU Vancouver is a strong proponent of open education resources which will help reduce this cost that you see listed. Scholarships are widely available and we encourage you to apply for the WSU General Scholarship application every year by January 31st. This application has more than 800 scholarships across the WSU system, 100 of which are just for Vancouver students. If you apply for admission by January 31st, you'll also be considered for scholarships that are automatically awarded when you are offered admission. Those scholarships are listed on the right hand side of this slide. One of the questions that we often receive is, do you have housing? And WSU Vancouver does not have on campus housing, so we don't have a freshman live in requirement. 
Students can live at home or they can look for housing options nearby. We have a web page on our website that you can go to to find about local housing options and access our online housing bulletin board to connect with other students who may be looking for roommates. We encourage you to get to know your admissions counselor. Just scan the QR code on the slide and you'll come to a web page where you can look up the admissions counselor assigned to your school. You can also schedule a one hour personal appointment via Zoom or phone, and we do take evening appointments by request as well. We encourage you to reach out to us no matter where you're at in your education, and we'll work with you on a plan going forward. We also offer a live virtual campus tour, and you can uh, take this campus tour over your computer and um, have it uh, narrated live by one of our current student ambassadors. We encourage you to sign up at the website listed below. And then this is our last slide. We encourage you to take a picture of this slide. This is our contact information and the many ways that you can reach out to WSU Vancouver. Thank you. Thank you very much. And if you have questions for any of our representatives, use the Q&A button. You can do that at any time. Also, check out the chat. You're getting links and contact information sent to you that way as well. So you can have that for your reference. Up next, let's hear from Seattle University. Hi, folks. It's so nice to have you all here today. My name is Lindsay Poisson, and I'm an admissions counselor here at Seattle U. I also have my colleague Yobel joining me, and he will be moderating the chat. So please ask away, ask any questions that you have. Um, Yobel, do you want to introduce yourself quick? Yes, for sure. Hello, everyone. My name is Yobel. I'm an admissions counselor. And yeah, feel free to put questions in the chat. I'll be there answering. Fantastic. Thanks. Without further ado, we'll go ahead and get started. All right, so I always like to start with this snapshot of Seattle University, um, but also first to mention our mission here at SU. So Seattle University is dedicated to educating the whole person. So making sure that you're growing, stretching, changing, and supported, not only in your academics, but also as a person. Um, second, we are dedicated to professional formation. So just expect to get out of the classroom and into the field that you're studying during your junior and senior year. This uh, generally, comes in the form of an internship or a research opportunity, um, but there's lots of different and creative ways for you to um, kind of immerse yourself into the work that you've been studying uh, during your freshman and sophomore year. And last but not least, we are dedicated to educating leaders for a just and humane world. So anticipate conversations about social justice, uh, both in the classroom and also outside of the classroom. It's kind of interwoven into all things that we do here at SU. Um, and it is also kind of a unique unifying factor of a lot of our students. Um, they seem to be really connected to our mission and want to have those conversations. Some other fast facts here that you'll see is that our 100% of our classes are taught by faculty members. So it means that you'll never have a TA or a grad student teaching your class. Um, our total undergraduate population is about 4,700 students. So although we have a bit of a mid to small size campus, um, we are in an urban setting. So you do have the hustle and bustle of Capitol Hill, a really vibrant community around you. Um, if you're not super familiar with Capitol Hill, it's Seattle's LGBTQ plus community. It's the arts and music community. So although you'll have a little bit of a smaller SU campus and community, um, there'll be lots going on around you and you'll have easy access to um, a lot of things that this urban space has to offer. Um, we have over 65 different degrees and programs here. Some of our most popular programs are um, nursing. We also have a really strong business program. A lot of students seek out our College of Science and Engineering, um, but other popular majors are social work as well as communication and media. 
Our average class size here is about 18 students. So if you were looking for that big lecture hall experience of walking into a room with 100 students, we, we don't have that here. But the benefit is that your professor will likely know your name. Um, they'll be able to support you if you, you know, need extra time or if you have questions, concerns about the content that you're learning. Um, but in addition to these small class sizes, we have lots of other resources available for our students to help um, with tutoring services. Um, our learning assistance program offers work workshops, study skills, um, workshops and sessions, and lots of ways for you to get support outside of the classroom as well. Um, and then our student to faculty ratio is about 11 to 1 here. All right, so obviously, um, we'll spend a little time talking about academics at SU, just because that's why you're pursuing higher education and a post-secondary degree. Um, we have all direct entry programs here at SU. So what that means is when you apply to Seattle University, you can select a major. And if you are admitted to that major, you don't have to reapply at any point in time. Um, some universities do not have direct entry programs. And so what that would mean is that you would need to reapply after your sophomore year. Um, and once you've completed prerequisites for that program. So here at SU, once you are in the program, you are in. There's no reapplication process. Um, something unique about Seattle University is our core curriculum. So here we offer a general education program that is more of a deep dive into specific questions. So some examples I like to give of our core curriculum um, is is some class titles. Uh, we have a class called Fire and Ice, and it's about the formation of glaciers and volcanoes. Um, we have a class called Food Sustainability in the U.S. Um, another class is called Sports and Spirituality, and it talks about the connection between the two of them. Um, so if you're looking for some unique core curriculum and general education classes, just know that that will be offered here. It's oftentimes um, something that the professor is really passionate about too. Um, we also have really strong advising, both pre-professional advising for students who are interested in going on a pre-med or a pre-health or pre-law or pre-education track, um, as well as strong advising within your major directly. Um, so just know that you'll meet with someone quarterly to make sure that you're on track, that you're enjoying your classes, but also ask those larger questions of, are you getting everything that you need out of your program here? Do you want to add in a study abroad trip? Do you have all the resources you need to be successful? Um, and then for students who have no idea what they want to be doing after they graduate, um, that's completely fine. We have a very strong pre-major advising program, which kind of walks you through the process of selecting courses and fine-tuning your strengths and kind of your vocational path and where you see yourself after you graduate. All right, so student life. This is a quick slide for um, kind of a lot of resources and clubs and organizations that we have on campus. So I'll, I'll try to move through it quickly. Uh, we have over a hundred different clubs or organizations. Um, we have all D1 athletics club sports, intramural sports. Um, we have an amazing triangle club, which supports our LGBTQ plus community. Um, we have cultural clubs, affinity clubs, religious based clubs, clubs related to um, maybe your major or just general interests. We have a fashion club, we have an outdoor adventure club. So, so many different ways that students get involved. I always joke, I have no idea when our students sleep. They seem to always be going to an event or supporting a club or um, going to a meeting to a club that they're involved in. So just know that there's plenty of ways for you to get involved and to build community here at SU. Um, as I mentioned before, we also have plenty of resources to support you. Um, we also have the Center for Community Engagement, which helps pair students with volunteer opportunities. Um, we have a Center for our first gen students um, just for a little extra support. Um, we have lots of different resources depending on what your needs are um, and lots of faculty and staff to support you in finding those resources. Um, now applying to SU, this is kind of the first step in, in the process. Um, we are located on the common application, so you can find us there, and we have two deadlines, early action November 15th, regular decision is January 15th, and you'd be applying to Seattle University during your senior year. Um, that being said, we have so many different pathways to SU, so if you're considering attending a community college beforehand and then transferring to SU, that is absolutely an option, um, and we can definitely assist you with that process. Um, we also do accept running start credits as well as AP and IB credits. Um, if you are a Running Start student, just know you'd apply as a first year, even though you do have some college credits. 
Now, as part of our review process, we're looking at your application holistically. Um, so there is the number side of things. We can't ignore your transcript um, as well as your GPA, the grades that you've received. But what we're looking at specifically is, have you added meaningful challenge? Um, what is your grade trend? So has there been any dips or, um, you know, have, has it declined or inclined, that's something that we're assessing when reviewing your application. And that's a wonderful opportunity for you to reach out to our office if you want to fill in the gaps there. Um, a lot of our review process is putting the puzzle pieces together. So anything that you email to our office really helps us in getting idea, an idea of who you are as a person. And um, we'll also be looking at your test scores if you choose to submit them, but we're completely test optional through and through. Um, we'll also look at your major prerequisites. Um, for example, if you're applying to the nursing program, Program, we're going to want to see a B or higher in your math or science courses. Um, but all of our major prerequisite um, requirements are all listed on our website. So feel free to reach out or you can find them there. Now, in your application, there's the other side of things, everything that makes you who you are, which is just as important, if not more important, the number side. We want to make sure that you're a great fit for SU. So we'll be looking at leadership and activities, how you spend your time outside of the classroom, and that can include working a part-time job, clubs, organizations, volunteering, caring for grandparents, so many ways that you spend your time outside of the classroom. We really want to see who you are as a person. We'll also be looking at your personal essay. This is an opportunity to showcase your writing skills, um, but it also is a way for you to speak directly to your admissions counselor. I know it's a little awkward speaking about yourself in an essay, um, but we really want to hear from you and hear your voice. Um, and then we'll also require two letters of recommendation, one from a counselor and one from a teacher. All right, and this is our last slide here, financial aid and scholarships. You'll see our annual costs list in this first little section, um, followed by a pretty big scary number, that estimated total cost of attendance. But if you look down to scholarship and aid, you'll see that our merit scholarships range from $8,000 to $25,000. Uh, we automatically award our merit scholarships based on the application that you submit, um, and it's guaranteed for four years. We also do have an SU bound program. So if you're a college bound student, um, just know that we um, do, do accept um, or, or do have an SU bound scholarship to help meet your need. Um, and then a Sullivan Leadership Award, which is a full tuition, full room board scholarship that we award to nine students. It looks like I'm at time here though. So I'm gonna go ahead, give you our contact information and then hand it over to Russ. Thank you very much. And you can also find contact information in the uh, chat as well for uh, each of our institutions. I'm gonna ask all of our representatives to come back on camera very quickly, turn on their microphones. I'm gonna do a quick Q and A. We've got time for one question. Have the three of you answer in the same order that you presented. And as we finish the last three minutes here, very quickly, what one piece of advice would you give someone going through the college search process right now? We'll start with Community Colleges of Spokane. Um, I'll jump in for that one. Uh, I would say that if you're able to visit a campus, which is tricky right now, we understand the state of things, that is a great way to see if you're going to be a fit for that campus. I know as a college student, I stepped onto a couple campuses and went, nope, and you just know <laughs> in your heart, this isn't going to be for me, or wow, I could see myself here. So I encourage you to do that, and if that's not a possibility, to try and do all the virtual tours you can to just really get a feel for what that campus might be like, uh, and if it's a fit for you. Washington State University, Vancouver. I would recommend get a calendar, your calendar of choice, whether that be your phone or the old fashioned uh, paper calendar and write down deadlines of all the schools that you're considering. Deadlines are so critical when it mean, means uh, get, taking advantage of opportunities, opportunities to pay for college, especially. And Seattle University. My one piece of advice would be to reach out to the admissions reps um, at all of the schools that you're considering. We're happy to support you any way that we can. And, um, and we, it doesn't matter to us where, or, or we wanna see you um, ending up at, at whatever school is the best fit for you. So it's okay if you don't end up at SU, please ask away, ask us questions. Um, and I know that all of the other admissions reps would say the exact same thing. So just know you have tons of support um, from our offices. Um, and we really want to see you thrive wherever you end up. Well, thank you all for sharing that great advice and also sharing all of the information that you could squeeze in in 10-minute presentations about your 
institutions. I wanna thank our attendees for joining us. When you close this window, there'll be a link to a very quick four question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. Also, this is just one of many different sessions being hosted there over the next two hours, more sessions coming up. So sign up for more if you haven't done so already at the same place you signed up for this one. And in about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other session recordings at strivescan.com slash wash council. Once again, thank you to our presenters for taking the time to share information with us today. Have a great rest of your Thursday. Take care.